Hello, my name is Rich Howard, owner of Architectural Builder Supply, and this video is to bring you a closer look at the Accurate number 142600. Uh, it would be either a 03 or a 04, depending on the length. Um, automatic door bottom. This is a mortised type automatic door bottom. What I'm showing you here is what is called the hinge side of the door because it has this slotted bolt here. I'm going to call it the plunger. The other side does not have that. It has everything except that. Okay. This is considered a heavier duty version um, of door bottom. So door bottoms, what are they? How do they work? Door bottoms are devices mounted to the bottom of a door that seals the door automatically when the door is closed. It's that simple. Uh, how does it work? Okay. Hinge side of the door gets this plunger side. This is a bolt and I can turn that bolt counterclockwise and get it to project out further from the housing than it did. And If I turn it clockwise it will go back in. When I depress this plunger, meaning that when it's installed in the door and the plunger is depressed by, uh, by means of it contact, making contact with the frame, the plunger is depressed and forces the bottom to drop. And everything I'm going to talk about the store bottom is going to, I think, uh, push my theory that door bottoms are very elegant solutions for sealing the bottom of a door. So when I depress this, what happens is the seal drops. Okay, it's that simple. So when it's installed into the bottom of the door and the plunger is sticking out on the hinge side and when the door is closed, the plunger makes contact with the frame. The plunger has nowhere to go but in and when it goes in, it forces the bottom to drop. Okay, so this is a mortise type and we're going to fire up here. There are links below this video to the product brochure and to the installation instructions. Now starting with the product brochure, you're going to see uh, six different types of door bottoms on there. Well, six different door bottoms. There's really only two different types. The mortise type and the surface mount type. The 426 model we're looking at here is the mortise type and you can see that in the lower right hand corner compared to the other mortise type. Lighter duty, standard duty, and then heavy duty. The 426 is the heavy duty. So looking at the link to the product brochure shows you Accurate's product offering of this and its sister products all in a all in one concise consolidated sort of view. Now drawing our attention to the 426, this model we're, we are reviewing now, you're going to see that it has a significantly larger amount of sponge neoprene that makes contact with the floor and it's got those two strips of poly thin pile and that is a really nice uh, option as well when it comes to sealing the bottom of the door because as the the ceiling bar drops down to seal that installed pile retards the transmission of air temperature th you know through that convoluted path that would have to take even though it would through the housing itself so that's a neat idea there uh, in terms of additional you got three points of, of seal is what's really happening and the width of that neoprene is quite substantial, as you can see. Okay. It's really large. It's thick. It's wide. And then, I'm going to hold it upright. You can see right at the very tip of my two fingers, well, one finger, here, and then here is where that polythene, that pile, is installed into the keyed or slotted uh, feature to the extrusion that's on the inside. So elegant solution number one is that it only does its job when the door is closed. Okay. Otherwise it's tucked up safely inside of its housing. Uh, installation. This is a mortise type. It's intended to be mortised to the bottom of a door and probably a wood door. Uh, I couldn't think of another door or some construction other than a hollow metal door unless it's been prepped for this of course but a, um, a wood door. You're going to need to route a channel in the bottom of your door so that this housing can come into it and be installed 
screwed directly to the bottom of the door by means of the flanges that are here. You can see that there are holes drilled and you would attach it with the screws provided. So mortising the bottom of the door for this, uh, the way I've done it, um, when I've not used or had at my disposal a CNC machine, I would take a plunge router <clears throat> and I would uh, attach a two flute carbide bit to a plunge router because <coughs> as you can see from the diagram you've got to get quite deep into the door. You know you're going to be almost two inches deep with your route. Um, <coughs> they're calling out looking at the instructions where it gives the uh, size 15 sixteenths wide and then inch and three quarter deep for your mortise in the bottom of the door. Um, ideally, if you found a carbide, two flute carbide bit with the proper diameter, you'd be in real good shape. Um, and that would be my first intent or intention. I would take my plunge router, get my bit, I would have attached to my router base, bolted to it, like a two or a two by two or a three by three aluminum angle. So that when I took my entire router and I turned it down its end with the face of the angle down on the face of the door, and be sure the angle doesn't have any sort of burrs on it, uh, maybe put masking tape on it after you've sanded it down. You don't want to scratch the face of the door. Get that drop down into the door and start on your right side and get your bit in a little bit and just pull that across the bottom of the door so the router bit's touching the bottom rail of the door. You want the center of that router to be router bit to be in the proper center of the door, meaning your angle when it's attached to the router base will be exactly so that you achieve that when it's all said and done. Uh, if you don't have the ability to make one pass in terms of the 15 16 channel they want, you'll need a way to be able to modify your router your angle so that you can drop the door down a little bit with a smaller, a thinner, um, uh, smaller diameter router bit. Plunge router, obviously, because you got to get an inch and three quarter deep with it. Um, if you have any questions or want to discuss how to go about mortising it, please feel free to reach out to me. That's the way that I've done it in the past, um, and that has worked, you know, countless times uh, for me. Um, looking at the drawing, you've got a small amount of margin there, but you know the instructions on the mortise size from Accurate are based on decades of experience, so deviating from that is something not really recommended uh, at all. Uh, so use your best judgment there. Now, um, another reason these are elegant. So when you get the material ordered, you can pretty much order this the width of your door. If your door is beveled, keep in mind that the measurement you take on the pull side is different than the measurement you'll have on the push side. If it was me, I'd measure the pull side or the big side, and I'd probably take a sixteenth of an inch off. And that's the size I would order this. I would ask the factory to cut it to the actual size that I need. These are listed in the website in several different lengths. However, none of those lengths will probably be exactly what you need. So order the next longest piece and indicate in the comment field what length you want us to cut the material back to. And that's what we'll go about doing. This material is manufactured out of extrusions that are 16 foot long, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So since the factory's cutting it anyway, Cut it right to the exact size you need. Perhaps you can't get to the job site. Perhaps it's uneconomical to drive two hours for one door bottom and you know it's at least a three foot door. Sure, of course that makes sense. But all of the instances when you can give actual net dimensions, do so. It saves you the labor. The factory has the obligation of getting it right. Um, and they're gonna cut it with proper tools. Um, you won't be worried about cutting it wrong, having to recut it, etc., making a mistake. Now, uh, talking about why it's elegant, step uh, next reason why. When the, you've got it cut to length, you've got your, rot, your mortise made, you're going to attach this to the door. You're going to get it attached to the door, screw it down. You're going to rehang your door, but before you go to close it, turn that in so it's only sticking out a very small amount. Okay, You don't want it sticking out very much because you want to be able to test it. So what, here's what happens. When you close the door, the plunger gets pushed in the bottom drops, but it doesn't drop evenly all the way across, and that's by design. That's the way this is supposed to work. But what happens in actuality is that my thumb will act as the sill over here. So as soon as the seal makes contact with the sill, the sealing bar makes contact with the sill, it drops down all the way across. 
So when I when I remove my thumb over here from being pretending it's the sill, it snaps back up. So the action of this is such that when the door is closed, it drops down and then comes down like this. It seals against a sill that's not exactly laser level, which none really are. Um, that makes it very elegant. Another reason it's elegant is as you get this starting to drop and you've got about a one inch maximum drop, turn it out one time, one revolution, test the door again. You want this just to seal against the top of your sill, not excessively pushing against it. The fact that when this is, when the door is open, the seal is tucked up into its housing. Nothing's dragging on a high polished floor. Weather stripping is not being uh, prematurely uh, worn out because of contact with stuff unnecessarily. You can have a rug inside it on the pull side of the door without there being something stapled to the bottom that's going to get damaged. The life expectancy of the neoprene can be expected to be exceptionally long because all it's doing is touching. It's not dragging at all. And that makes it elegant as well. I'm a big fan of these. Now, installation instructions. I want to go over them um, if you've got the time. Step one, cut unit to match door width. Well, we've already done that. It says always cut the opposite end of the adjusting screw. You, can't, you would only cut this end. You could not cut this end because you don't want to mess up the works. You need that plunger. That's the business end of this. Okay. This is always the hinge side. It has to come in contact with the jam. If you envision installing it on the lock side, you'll see why that wouldn't work. So as you try to close the door, this would hit the frame. Undercut the ceiling bar by an eighth of an inch. What they're meaning is the part that drops down. Snap that back an eighth of an inch because it has a tendency when it drops and seals to kind of do this a ever so slightly. And that's another reason why it's a great idea to have the factory do it because they're gonna size the ceiling bar properly. Depending on the part number, make your groove. We've already done that. We've got the mortise, etc. cetera. Um, step four doesn't apply because we're not doing a 424. Where are we? Nope, we're not. 426. Step five, turn adjusting screw clockwise until it's approximately an eighth of an inch. We've talked about that. Your door is hung. You've tested it for proper operation and it's sealing properly. Um, this is non-handed. It can be used on either left or right hand doors just so that this is always on the hinge side. Okay. Warning at the bottom of the page. Care must be taken not to overstress the ceiling bar and cause internal damage. What that means is as you're testing it, don't have so much of this turned out that it's putting undue pressure on the ceiling bar when it drops because as soon as you start to open the door, you want the ceiling bar to snap back up into the housing. You don't want any undue pressure of it pushing down on the ground so that when you open the door, it's still wanting to push down. How that works is the plunger is connected to a flat spring. There's evidence of the flat spring by this screw here, the other end. Okay, So inside of here is a flat spring. When the flat spring is compressed, meaning the plunger is touching the frame and it has nowhere to go but in, it compresses the flat spring, the flat spring can only belly. As it bellies, it forces this to drop down. That's just simply how this works. If you've got too much pressure on that flat spring, pushing the ceiling bar down, you will damage the unit uh, when you go to open it, is the bottom line. That's why that warning is so critical that you have that there. Um, all of those reasons, in my opinion, you know, coincide to make this an elegant solution. If I've sold 10,000 of these, there's been one time when a client has said, that makes a lot of noise when it closes. And I says, well, what do you mean? Well, what she meant was, she, he, whatever, whoever, when this snaps back up, you can hear that. And it's true, you can. You can also hear the, the latch bolt strike the strike plate as well. You can hear the door make contact with the face of the stop as well. However, I mention it because I'm aware of it. Um, that was the only complaint ever on one of these. Never that they wear out never that they're an elegant solution, uh, never that they were exactly what they needed, but that they made too much noise. I don't think it's ever caused anyone not to buy one of these, and I can't think of an application where making a small amount of noise is an issue that I've run into, but I'm aware of it, so I mention it. Uh, accurate, a uh, full-line manufacturer of all things weather stripping related. 
uh, both uh, automatic door bottoms, a lot of threshold, unique threshold solutions. I wouldn't hesitate to use them personally or to suggest that somebody else do so as well. If you have any questions on the accurate 142600 three or 004, depending on the size, uh, or any other accurate product, please feel free to reach out to us. Thank you.